and welcome back to Habits of a Modern Hippie. Easter is right around the corner, so I thought I would try out some all natural made from food and tea Easter egg dyes. I used a total of 12 eggs, six white ones and six brown ones, and a few different ingredients. And I had some mixed results, hi. Some of them are beautiful, some not so much. So I will take you through what I did, no Meeks, and what worked for me and what didn't. To start out, we're gonna need to hard boil our eggs. To do that, I use a large pot big enough so it can take 12 of the eggs all in one layer, add a pinch of salt and a splash of vinegar to the water, and then add each egg in. Let that come to a boil, then turn off the heat and let sit for 10 to 12 minutes. While that is happening, I'm going to start making the dyes. For the vegetable dyes, you want to do a one-to-one -one ratio of the chopped veggie to water. Here I have two cups of chopped red cabbage and I'm adding in two cups of water. Bring that to a boil and then let simmer for about 15 minutes. Strain and let cool down. And make sure to add a splash of vinegar to each of your egg dye containers to roughen up the eggshells. For the tea ingredients, just steep a cup of tea super, super strong and big enough to hold an egg. After all of that is finished, you want to take one of your hard-boiled eggs and pop it into each one of your dye containers. Now I know this seems super involved for dyeing eggs, and instead of going to the store to get one of those easy little kits, you have to do a little bit of work here, but for me, it's worth it. You never know what kind of gross, unnatural chemicals are in those egg dyes, so things like cabbage, tea, all of that, you know what's in it and what's going into your body. Go ahead and pop your canisters with eggs into the fridge and let sit for 24 hours or until the eggs are as dark as you'd like them to be. After waiting, go ahead and gently use a spoon to take all of those eggs out, let them dry on a paper towel, and then you can pop them back in to your egg carton. Then enjoy. So I left all of those eggs for a 24 hour period. And I will just quickly go through what I liked the best and the least. So the matcha green tea ended up with a gorgeous yellow egg of the white. And then just a slightly brown egg. Wouldn't recommend the green tea in a brown egg. It just kind of makes it a little yellowy brown. But the bright yellow white egg is gorgeous. And next, these gorgeous orange eggs. This was a white egg in yellow onion. And the same brown and yellow onion, once again, white worked better, brown not so much, but it's still a pretty a little bit redder color of brown. Next, I tried the red onion where the pictures I saw of it looked beautiful. These, not so much. Um, the white egg looks moldy. <laughs> kind of disgusting. <laughs> and then the brown egg went almost like a slate gray. So if you were doing like a black and white kind of thing, this would look really cool. Next were red beets. This is a really pretty like dusty rose color from the beet in a white egg. And then the same, it almost turned out almost the same color <laughs> with the brown egg as well. So I really do like these. Um, they're not as red as I expected them to be, but they turned out really pretty nonetheless. Hibiscus tea. In my head, I was like, ooh, this is one of the reddest teas I know. They turned out weird marbled. When they came out of the cups, they were really gross, sticky, full of like, looked like swamp mud on them, but I washed them off and they turned out this kind of like marbly gray. So while I was expecting pink or red, that didn't happen so much. Both colors, um, the brown egg is a little darker than the white egg, but they did come out in that very trendy marble theme. So maybe that's something you can work in. However, the last are my favorites. This is red cabbage with a white egg, and you cannot get prettier than that color blue. 
And this is the brown egg with that same red cabbage. And I can see as I stirred them around, there are lines on this egg. So they're probably going to get, if you leave them in for longer than 24 hours, as dark as this, so that really gorgeous dark navy blue. But both of these are super pretty, worked out really well for me. I would love to know your experience with egg dyeing. Have you ever dyed Easter eggs or if you ever tried a natural Easter egg dye? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'd love to see you back here again. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye. So making this gorgeous spring wreath is super easy. You'll only need a few supplies and I'll show you those in a sec. But this whole thing only took me about 20 minutes and as you can see it is quite large and I adore it.